What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like and subscribe button. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build an app like HackerRank or Exorcism where users can sign up and then they can take your coding challenges, have a editor right on the website where they can type in the code, try to get it to pass all of your tests. And then once they pass the test, they've completed the challenge. Excited to watch this? So without further ado, let's just jump right into the code. All right, so I'm gonna start off in the terminal and I'm gonna create this new app. And really the reason I'm building this is because I used a website before called Exorcism, which is actually pretty cool. I can pull it up, but they allow you to do coding exercises. And it's just to help you get better at programming. They have a lot of different languages that they support too. I just thought it'd be cool if we could build an app like this. I don't know if I can show you it, if I can just sign in real quick. All right, so one option they have is log in with GitHub. So that's kind of nice because most people already have GitHub. So then if you look, here's my progress in the Ruby track. So I haven't really completed all of them because uh, they're locked until you complete like a certain amount of ones before it. But if I click on one of these, I'll show you what it looks like. So there's like a little description. Then you can also install Exorcism locally. But what I'm really focused on is building the web app part. So they have like this, um, I think they're just giving us examples to kind of help us. Let me see, what is the challenge? It's kind of confusing to see where it is, but I think you just have to start it to see what it is. But you see like on the right, there's a Ruby file. There's a code inside and there's even a code editor. So we can go and write any of the Ruby code inside of here. And we can change this to a different method. Then on this side, we have tests. It's kind of weird. They just talk like a lot. That's what I don't really like about exorcism. <laughs> there's too much going on here. It's almost like a lesson, which I guess might be good, but I don't want to read all this. I'm also past the, like the learning stage in developing. You guys might find this cool. But I guess what the first task is, make new attendees. Implement the initialize method. So see right now, we just initialize it. And then we raise an error. We raise an error actually in everything. Uh, so I'm pretty sure. Oh, interesting. So you can have ChatGPT integrate with exorcism. Well, I don't know how that would help with learning since it'll just tell you how to do the code, but maybe they have a thing where it, it's kind of like a mentor bot. I'm not sure though. I'm curious. Oh, run test. So right down here, this is like the important thing is run test. You click that and then it actually runs the test and it'll tell you if your code's right. Right here, we run this test and it tried to initialize the height but it just raised an error. So I wanna see how can we build something similar to this just from scratch. So let's start it off. Let's go into the console and I'm gonna type Rails new to create my new app. I'm just gonna call it coding challenges. Then I'm gonna specify dash D for the database. And I'm gonna set that to PostgreSQL. This is just a really nice and friendly database that I like to use. Now we can use dash C and specify Tailwind for the CSS framework, which is what I'm using for all these videos, just because it lets me move quick. But if you want to use regular CSS or another framework like Bootstrap or component libraries, you can feel free to do that too. This is just showing you how we can get this type of app built and get it done. So now that we generated the app, let's CD into there and I'll start the server with bin slash dev. Now, once we did that, we can go and open up the browser, go to localhost uh, colon 3000 to go to port 3000. And then the first thing we see, active record, no database error. That's fine. It's just because with PostgreSQL, you always have to create the database for a new app. So just click create database. That'll set everything up. And then now we see the Rails logo 
Uh, we're on Rails 7.1.3. So we're ready to start coding. From here, uh, there's a few things we could do. We could set, we could start off with a little home page. So I'll generate a controller. I'll do Rails G controller. Let's do pages controller, and I'll have a home action. And I'll start the server again. And the only thing we have to do now to get that home page to show up on the root is we have to set that. So if we go and open up the code, I'm using VS Code. Then we can go to the config folder, the routes.rb. And you'll see right up at the top, we have this get pages slash home that was added with the generator. We can actually delete this. And I'm going to go and change the root down here at the bottom. And I'm going to change this to go to the pages and the home action. Now, if we refresh, we'll see that we have this pages home text, uh, which that is set back in the code and the app folder views, pages, and the home template. So you see it just kind of maps to this because we set the root. And if we want to change anything in here, we could just change the text. Hello. Refresh and we see our message. But for this app, it's going to be cool coding challenges. Now we don't really, <clears throat> I also don't really know how this is set up, but we might as well add users so that they can track their progress. Although we could keep it simple and not even uh, do that for this episode. It's mostly gonna be about having like the test run and all that. Okay, so I'm trying to style it, but uh, looks like there's some issues. Oh, let's do it on the div. Flex, flex call, item center center this and then I guess we'll just have a link to sign in which right now we don't have any of the user stuff so let's quickly add that by going back in the terminal we're gonna bundle add the device gem which device is gonna have all the stuff that we need for users and we're also gonna add my gem which is tailwind underscore device which will allow us to style the sign in and sign up pages with tailwind now after we do that uh, we'll do a rails g device colon install uh, which will install some things for device and then it also tells us some next steps like doing the root adding alerts so we can add the alerts real quick so to add alerts you just go into the, the code in the views folder layouts in the application file and we just add it right to the top of the body you can render a partial called layouts slash alerts and then this is going to look for a file in the layouts folder so we're going to go and create that file but it's going to have to be a partial which means it has an underscore at the start of the name and it allows us to render in different files like that and i'll just save that and this should be good and we've, if we also want to remove this container just so we can style the page better we could do that but i might just leave it for now oh and then uh, the last command is rails g to generate the views but actually, we're going to do that with my gem. So instead of Rails G device, we're going to do Rails G Tailwind device, colon views. And that'll install all the views and make them pretty with Tailwind. After we did that, the last step we need to do is generate the user model. So type in Rails G device and then the name of your model, which for us is going to be users. And I'll run that. We can migrate the database and we'll be all set to go. So I'll restart with bin slash dev. Can refresh and now we see the sign in page although it doesn't go anywhere so if we go back here let's just point this to new user session path and I'll also give it a little bit of styling i'm just doing like the basic styling that i usually do on these videos just to make it like a, a block button and we can sign in and we can also create an account this is gonna be my new user. He's really excited about doing some coding challenges. Boom, now after I signed up, I'm a successful signed in user. I wanna change this so I don't see this screen anymore. So for that, let's go into roots. And if you see down here, we have the root for pages home, but we can actually change the root when a user signed in by adding this piece of code 
authenticated user and then pass it a block like this by saying do and then ending it and inside of here you can add any routes that you want to have take effect when the user signed in so for us we're just going to do a new route which is going to go uh to somewhere we might just go challenges index and we can say as authenticated user root just to call it something different okay it doesn't have challenges controller so that's the next thing i'm going to generate if we go back into console i can do a rails g scaffold for challenge and this is probably going to have a lot of stuff on it that i can't really think of right now maybe just description we do a rich text description allow the person or like the creator of the challenge which will most likely be an admin to start uh, but we'll create this with a description and then we'll think about the other fields later so do the scaffold now we can run rails db migrate now one thing we did with the rich text uh, is it's it's going to use action text which is a, a library inside of rails but to get this to work we need to run a quick method calls rails action text colon install and that'll set up everything for action text and active storage which is for file storage and then we can do rails db migrate to migrate the database and let's restart the server okay so now we have a new challenge so let's go and create a new challenge let's think about what would this challenge uh, be <clears throat> Think of a simple, like just a simple, simple coding challenge for someone who's getting into this. For someone who's learning to code. Oh, I should have put a name. That's one thing. I want to name it. Oh, but that's fine. Inside here, this is the coding challenge to create a calculator. How about that? Need to create a calculator do math and return the correct answer right that's a pretty easy one but this is like this is actually really good for someone who's learning to try to figure out something like this so now we have this new challenge although really we wouldn't want to show uh, the link to create a new challenge for just a random user and we wouldn't want to show a few of these things so let's go and clean that up Actually, we can make this a little bit better too. Uh, but let's go back to the code. And let's go in the views folder, the challenges, index. Inside here, I'm just gonna start deleting some stuff. Uh, so like inside here, link to new challenge. Let's just delete that. And then I'll delete the notice too, since we already have notices in our app. We don't need that secondary notice. And also, uh, there's a few more things, right? So for these challenges, it depends how we want them to show up. But I probably just want like a pretty card to start. So if we look at that, it's down here in render challenges. That's where we're looping over all of the challenges. So if I want to change the styling from just like a horizontal thing of boxes, and I want it to be a grid, let's use grid. And I'll specify how many columns there's going to be. So I want to do three, four, however many. I'm going to start with three. Now you see it actually try to put them side by side. We can also do a gap of the sub number. Now we don't have enough challenges to really see this. Uh, but also let's take out the option to edit. So that's, since we're rendering this like this, render challenges, it's actually just rendering the challenge partial. But they just have that that nice helper to make it a little bit easier. So inside of the challenge helper, we can see what we have, which mostly it's just the description with a bunch of padding. So I don't even want to have that there. And then down here, there's like show or edit. And then also HR, which HR is like a just a line across. So you see it back here, it's that little gray line. We don't really need that either. So let's just delete that and the edit. So really all you have is the description of it and then you have the option to go and show it now one thing we can see is the text got all squished because i got rid of that margin so let's just style the the actual div that's holding all of this we can give this some padding 
could also give it some sort of lighter backgrounds. There we go, it already looks a little bit better. Let's put some margin top on the main div just to push it down from the challenges text. Now it's like the coding challenge to do this. I also want the text to be a little bigger. So actually let's wrap the description in its own div. And then let's just give it a text large. Should help that show up a little bit bigger. And instead of show this challenge, why don't we have it say like start challenge. See, it's like the coding challenge to, to do this start challenge. Okay, and now when you're on this start challenge page, this would be where you're actually like challenging it. So definitely we need to delete these two links here, edit and destroy, because we don't want a user to be able to see that. So let's go in the views folder, challenges show page. And there's a few things that we can delete, like the notice. We don't need that anymore. Yeah, with the scaffolds, they do add a lot of stuff that's that you don't need. But, <clears throat> I don't know. I just tend to do it for the video, although I, I end up having to just delete a lot of stuff too. So right here, I have to delete the destroy and the edit link. And all we're left with is the back to challenges button. And there's a problem with margin, so if I delete the ML2, Oh, that was just the margin down here. And then I actually should just add some margin between the challenge and the back to challenges. So I'll do a break. But also, oh, rendering the challenge, we might not even want to reuse this because that challenge partial, we're kind of using it for the card up here. Right. But it kind of works here, so we could leave it. It's up to you. The next thing is actually like building the challenge part. Right. One thing I don't like is this width. Two thirds is just kind of too small. Well, I don't think you can get bigger because we're using the container. Uh, we might want to just either remove that or do a separate layout. So what I mean is like this main one just adds this margin to the whole app that we might not want. Then we kind of have to add it back to those pages. So if we go back to the index, instead of width full, we do like max width, MX auto, and then some margin on the top. And that'll kind of fix it back to where we wanted it to be. And then on the show page too, we could do some, some padding top or some margin top. Coding challenge to create a calculator. Okay. Now what I want to have is one for one, for one, I want like a, code editor you can actually write the code and then I also want to have like a run test button so honestly this could really just be a form so let's start off by building that if we go back in here let's do right underneath render challenge uh, we can either do it here or we can render in a partial which might be a little bit easier so let's render a new partial now, since we're already in the challenges folder, all we have to do is give it a name of the file and it'll look inside of the challenges folder for this partial. So I just want to call it code editor. Now let's pass in the challenge. So passing it like this adds it as a local variable. So say challenge is equal to this. And now we can go and create that code editor partial. So I'll do underscore code editor. Uh, HTML to ear B. Wait, editor is totally with an E. Editor. Oops. And then inside of here, we're going to do a form with. This is going to have to go to some URL, which right now we don't have the URL, so we might want to do that. But it would be like challenge run test path or something. No, we don't have this yet, so if we go refresh, It'll actually throw an error. Uh, nothing like that. It exists. So you have to go and create that route. So to do that, we just go in the config folder, the routes.rb. And inside of here, we'll just put it in the resources challenges. So we'll add a block. And then I'll also do a scope module challenges. Now, what the scope does is, oh, and make sure to do a block too. 
what the scope's gonna do is it's gonna make us have a nested setup. So instead of like the, the challenges folder, or the challenges goes to a challenges controller. If you do a scope inside of here, and then we add our other thing like resources, run tests, right? This is gonna look for a run test controller. But since we did a scope with the module challenges, it's gonna need this to be inside of a nested challenges folder. So the reason why I'm doing this is just to kind of clean it up. Otherwise, we just have a run test controller next to the, all the rest of them, which that's fine too. But with the module, it just means we have to create a new folder to get it set up. So in the controllers folder, let's create a new folder called challenges. And inside of there is where we'll add the run test controller. And inside here, we're gonna need to add the module for challenges. Oops. And then, then we can do a class for run test controller. This is gonna inherit from the application controller. Oops. And it's gonna have a create action where we'd actually run test. Which <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out how to do this, but it's kind of exciting. Okay, so now we refresh, we see it's working but it's missing the challenge ID for the URL. So let's go back in the code editor and all we have to do is pass in that challenge local variable into that path helper. And then just like that, we have everything set up. So inside of this form is where we're gonna think about the actual code editor. So let's do a, a label for code and then let's do a f dot text area. It looks pretty bad, so we can let's wrap it in a div. Flex, flex call, gap four, that's fine. And on the text area, we'll actually add some styling with full, maybe like a min height of, we can do anything. I'm gonna do pixels, 300 pixels. We might want it to be a little bit larger though. Also, I don't want to have the resize here. So to do that, it's actually a CSS thing. So you go in here, you do style, and then you say resize none. And you'll see that the resize button goes away. And then inside here is where the person would, would write their code. So if it's like the coding challenge is to create a calculator, you need to create a calculator that can do math. This might look like... Next question I'm really having is what library should we use to run the tests? And if we look in the code, uh, let's just collapse out of all these folders real quick, just to make it simpler. Collapse them, and let's just look at what we have inside of our Rails app. We actually have a test folder where we have already a testing library set up with Rails. So if we see what that is, application system test, it doesn't really say it, but we're using mini tests and it's just very simple. It's like a class with a test. So the question is, how can we, how can we write one of these for the challenge? All right. So what I'm thinking to get this to work is we can go to the edit page and then when we're editing the challenge, we should probably have a field to add in the test. And then what I'm hoping is that, uh, we can do something where we just have to like add tests like this basically in that field and then in our app we'd automatically create this class and then run the test file whenever we're gonna actually test the solution so let's go and start working on that so let's add another text field to the edit page where it's gonna be the test so to do that i'm gonna go into the app folder the views challenges and then inside of here we can go to the underscore form so this is the actual form to update the challenge itself and i'll just copy this description but instead of a rich text area it's just going to be a text area and instead of description we're going to call this uh, the test or might want to call it Okay, we 
going to call it tests. I don't think that'll conflict with anything. And then what I want the user to be able to do is just write a test, like one of these regular tests that we already have. We could test like calculator works. But one thing I want to, I'll fix the height too. Uh, so if you go back in that form, you can give this a default height. So we can do this actually in the class. We can just say a min height, however many pixels we want. I'm also going to turn off the resize. All right, so let's write our first test. And I just want to make sure that the class is there. So you can just test for calculator class exists. Give it a block. And then inside of here, we would check. I found this code right here, uh, which might work in Ruby. So we just assert object const to find calculator. And then if this fails, it just means that they haven't defined the calculator class yet. And then inside of insert, we can also put a message. Say like, you need to define a calculator class. And now before I update it, we haven't permitted the test into the controller. So I want to do that real quickly so I don't have to rewrite this. You see in the field, we have text or test. <laughs> see, that's the confusing part. I think I want to call it test. Um, I don't even know. Tests, plural. Test text. Challenge test. Although we already, it's, it's already called test. So let's just call it test. Let's remember that. And now let's go in the controller, the challenges controller. Down here at the bottom in the challenges params, we're just gonna permit that test field, which would then go and update on challenge. But right now we don't have a test field on the challenge. So I'm gonna add that in a migration. So we go to the terminal, I'll do RLG migration, add test to challenges. Test is gonna be type text. Then I'll run enter. And if we take a look at what that generated, we just added a column to the challenges called test, which is type text. It's kind of tricky to say, but now let's migrate the database. And we can restart the server. Calculator class should exist. And we're just going to assert <coughs> to grab that code right here. So we're going to assert the object is defined, which we'll pass it as a string. And our message will say, if it fails, we'll say, uh, you need to define a calculator class. Now let's update the challenge and it should have saved. If we look in the console, uh, there was an update query <coughs> where we updated a few things, uh, but mostly just the test. And if we go back to the edit page, uh, we'll see that it has saved. So now the question is, how do we run that test file against some code that we have here? So this is just like some regular Ruby. Right? We don't even have the button to submit this. So I want to do that real quick. So we have, this is on the show page. This is the person who's trying to complete the challenge. I want to have a link like the one on exorcism that just says run tests. So if we go in the views, challenges, and the code editor, all we're going to do is we're just going to put the submit button, so f.submit, and then we'll just say like run tests right here. And I want to style that a bit better. do a br to add a little space and also cursor pointer just so that we can tell we're actually trying to click on this and then you click run tests 
and it should actually run the test. So if you see, it did make a post request, but we're not doing anything in that controller. So that is the next step inside of the challenges, wait, no, inside the challenges folder. So in controllers, challenges folder, run test controller. In this create action, we need to actually run that test file. So first we can get the challenge. Just set that it'll be in the challenge ID uh, because it's nested in the module. So challenge equals challenge that find by the challenge ID. And then we have that test. So we just need to figure out how can we run this? How can we pass this to mini test with also the params code? So what we should be able to do is use the mini test runnable class or something like this, where we can create the runnable class and then we can run it and get the results. But first we need to have a test class that we can run in this. And I feel like the best way to create this class might be when the challenge is created. So when it's created or actually when it's updated, we could go and then update the test file. And I'm thinking we'll store it as a file too. So we might even create a service for this or something. So yeah, essentially after the challenge is saved, we will want to go and update the file. So we could do, actually I'm not going to do service, I'm going to do a job. Just a background job and we can put the code in there. Let's, new, let's create a job by typing rusg job. And I'll call this create test file job. And we're going to end up passing in the challenge ID. So it looks like this create test file job. And then perform later. And we'll pass in the challenge ID. And over here in the jobs file, under jobs folder, you'll see that we got a new file called create test file job. And inside of here, is where we're going to create that, that that test file. So we have a challenge ID that we're passed in. And then we can set the challenge from that by finding challenge by the challenge ID. Now that we have the challenge, we have access to the challenge.test method. Inside of here is all of the tests that we defined. What we need to do is create a file that has this content inside of it. Okay, so I guess it'd be as simple as something like this. Just file open. So almost what I'm thinking is just file open. Uh, we need to do a file path. Oops. So file path, I would want to make it unique, but it's just gonna be a temporary file. So we'll put it in the temp folder. Actually, we just need this to be a, a, a unique file. So let's put it back to secure random UID. Do underscore test. And right in the file puts, this is where we're going to put all the content. So I think to start off, let's think about what the test file would look like. <clears throat> I feel like it would have a class. And here we put uh, the class name. So right now we don't have a class name defined. Described off the challenge. So it might be like challenge. Oh, and then let's just put the challenge ID. Be like challenge one test. That'll be the name of the class. So we put the class here. Uh, we go on new line and then we can add <laughs> just the content. So the content would be challenge.tests just like that and then we end the class with the end <laughs> so I'm thinking this will create a whole test file and then at the end uh, well, we would open this file you see we opened it as write but we're going to open it as read down here attach it on the challenge model. 
We might have a thing called test file. And we attach it. IO local file. And then file name. So for file name, we could actually do something like class name dot rb. So it generates the class name from up here, and it'll actually match the class. So I feel like that's this is like the most logical way to do this. But we don't have the test file defined on the challenge, but adding that's really simple in Rails. We just go to the models, the challenge model, and right under where we define the rich text, we'll say has one attached test file. And so let's set up the attachment for that so that we can actually attach a file on the model. And the last thing we're gonna do uh, is just delete. I forget how to do this. I think just file.delete. Give it the file path. All right, so let's see if this works. So I'm just gonna trigger this by going, well, since we're doing it in the controller, challenges controller, we're doing it in create. We can also do an update. And then let's see if this works. So let's just go to the edit page and we'll trigger an update. Clicking update. And then if we look, it looks like a background job was triggered. Create test file job where it updated some things. So now I want to go into the console and look at that. So I'll say challenge.last.testfile.attached. It says yes. Can I get the URL? Blog path? No. It needs to, we need to include the routes URL helper so we can actually try to access that in the console. And now that we include that, we could try to access the URL. Although, it doesn't like blob.url. I thought we did have that dot blob. Maybe it's dot blob dot URL, but it couldn't find it because the <laughs> active storage. Okay. Let's just do URL for. Ah, we can't do that either. Okay. It's be just because we haven't set the host. If we wanted to do this in the console, we could. We just have to do a method like default URL options. And then return a hash with host set to our host. Now it works. See, just like that. It's just because you have to have your default URL options which we can fix this also by adding something in an initializer, but we don't have to worry about that right now. We just have this file. So I want to open that and see, wait, what does that look like? So I downloaded it and it's actually an RB file. For some reason it's starting to open in Xcode. That's strange. Oh, the only thing is it doesn't indent it, but that's fine. <laughs> that's really fine. This is crazy enough that it actually works so now we have a test file how can we go well it should be a lot easier in the if we go over to the challenges run test controller and in here where we need to run the test right now we actually have a whole file that we can run real quickly i'm going to change how we're creating the test file so right in here how we're on the first line we're defining the class is the class name but usually tests would inherit from a class, like a test class. So if we go into the test folder and just look at this, you'll see usually it's a class and then it inherits from active support test case. So let's make sure that we add that. So right on the first line where we're adding the class, let's also add the inherit. This is going to inherit from active support test case. And then we can go back and actually Go and rerun creating that file. It'll fix that. And then now we have a class that inherits from the active support test case. After that, we're gonna go to the run test controller and we're gonna start working on actually making this run the test. So the first thing that we're gonna do is at the very top, we're gonna wanna require mini test because we're gonna need this if we're gonna use it here. So we can say require mini test slash auto run. Now inside of the create action, we're gonna actually write the code to execute this test and run it. <clears throat> this is gonna be really cool. So let's get started. The first thing we can do is we can find the challenge. 
go find this uh, the challenge ID param. And then we're actually going to create a new instance of a mini test. So I'll just call this test class equals class.new. And it's going to be type mini test test. And now to get that content, so we have that file, right? We have challenge dot test file but to get this inside of the content of this class we're going to use a method called class eval so we can say test class dot class eval and then we'll pass in that file but we're gonna to have to download it so that'll look like test file dot download and then after that uh, we actually want to create an instance because to run so we have everything set up right we created class file it has our test content inside but now i need to create an instance of this so we can say test class new we actually need to give this a name as a parameter so i'm just going to do a similar thing we did in the job where i just create it off the challenge and we'll interpolate challenge id and then we'll end it off with test so that's the test that's the name of our class and then from there, all we have to do is run the test. So we can say result equals mini test dot run. And then we should be able to just pass in the instance, which we created here. Test instance equals test class new with the name. Although one tricky thing I ran into is mini test run is actually expecting an array. So you have to turn this to an array for it to work properly. But then after we should be able to get the result. So let's see if this works. Let's go back to that challenge page. I'll just put some random stuff, run the test, and let's see what that does. So if we go in the console, it's actually running the test and it's giving us back the feedback, but we don't see anything on the page. So if we want to put something on the page, first let's see what the result gives us. So if we run the test, uh, now we end up in the result in our pry. And the result is actually, is it just false? I thought they would give, hmm. I thought they would give us more information about it. So what I found out is mini test run will only return true or false when we do it like this. But the content that it does return, like all of this uh, running, it gets sent to standard output. And that's the stuff that I actually want to capture so I can print it out on the page or like broadcast it to the user. Okay, so I was just creating a new challenge. Actually, but it's the same one for a calculator and it has a test. Uh, but something I noticed is because now I'm, it has less text in the description, it's not filling up the whole page. So I want to quickly fix that. I think that's because of this MX Auto. So actually, let's just delete that whole MX Auto div. Now this looks messed up, so right up here instead of flex, well, we'll still have flex, but we'll add the flex call option to make that correct. Okay, and this already looks a little bit better. And then in here, uh, we would go and write our code, like a calculator class. Then we should be able to run the tests and have it execute. So if you see, it actually did run the test right there. But I think the turbo stream, I thought we didn't have to add it, but we do have to add the target or not the target, but the broadcast um, like object, even though we're doing it off the challenge, we still need to pass in challenge apparently. And you'll see down here, it's actually running it. Now, one thing about the assertions in mini test is that it keeps the count of how many times you've run it. Uh, so this kind of doesn't make sense if you're just trying to like do a coding challenge that says 26 failures. I mean, I guess it kind of does, right? But right now it's actually not working even though we have a calculator class. Uh, so I want to add another text. So even though we have this, we overrated standard output and we printed it here. That's pretty cool. Like that's actually instead of it going into the console, well, I think it's doing it both and it's also broadcasting. But this is also really sketchy. That's why I said this was just kind of for fun. Because overriding standard output isn't just 
some standard procedure. I don't know, like, is this gonna, is that gonna kind of save? I'm guessing this would save even when you redirect off the page. You might want to think about that. It's, we're kind of overriding this thing. But this was just kind of a fun option. Okay, but the real part is I wanted to get to was let's broadcast something for when the result is completed. So we could just say, well, it depends how we want to do it. Maybe we'll have a whole <clears throat> partial. So what we can say is if result, which means like if it was, if it passed, then we're going to do this. Let's broadcast append to challenge target results. Let's just do a whole partial. And the partial is going to be challenges slash complete. So we're going to have a complete partial and else uh, we could have a failed partial. And I'll go and create that complete.html. And you'll see how I did it off challenges. Uh, because we're in the run test. So if I didn't do a run if I didn't do challenges, it would be looking for it in the in the challenges slash run test folder, which we don't even have. So I'm just gonna put it inside of the challenges folder. I'll go over here and create complete. Oh, we already did. So inside here, let's just go ahead and do a nice like right message to tell them that they completed and do it like really bright and green and it's just gonna say like you solved the challenge and even be cool to do some cool like confetti or something right and then the other case is the failed let's go and add the failed partial so underscore failed .html .erb. And I'll basically just copy it, but then change the green to red. <laughs> you failed the challenge. Although I don't want to say that. I want to be more nice, but like... Uh, the test failed. Try your solution. Or like, try a new solution. Right. Then we run tests. And this is what we get. So we get the runs. And we also get the test failed. Try a new solution. Let's say we do get the solution. See, because the only test that we have, if we go to edit, we're only testing if the calculator cl like object exists. So since I do have class calculator, it should work. But right now we're not doing anything with this code. So to actually execute that code, I'm gonna do something that is very looked down upon in the Rails in the Rails world because I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna execute that code with eval. Which, if you don't know eval, it it just executed like regular Rails code, which means the user could do anything. They could do something like challenge dot destroy all, and then destroy the challenge that they're on. User dot destroy all. So in the perfect world, we would actually find a way to separate the scope and run the tests and the code solution in its own scope. If you if you're thinking about what I mean by scope, I mean like the the code level, like almost you need a whole another server, a whole another app or something that you put this stuff into and then you run it on that level just so that the user, even if they say like user about destroy all, it doesn't know about your scope. It doesn't know about user. It only knows about their code and the test. Uh, but for this video, I just want to keep it simple and uh, I do want to look into that sort of solution. But I'm just not so not sure. So if you know it, please comment down below, and you'll probably teach us a lot. But let's do the quick solution to just get these tests to pass and to get this simple app working. So all I'll do is before I run the tests, I'll do eval and I'll pass params code. So this right here is like this is like the the worst thing a Ruby programmer could see in a real production app. This is like a walking red flag, but we're going to do it for this app because it's fun and it's going to be an easy way to, to get this to work. Also using mini tests for this, we can't even get the results correctly. We had to override standard output, which is insane. But this is just showing you how you can get it to work. So now if I do class calculator, 
run the test. It actually fails, but it fails for a strange reason. Because when we eval this and it creates the class inside of this nested, it's actually looking for, or it doesn't know about a regular calculator. It only knows about a challenges run test controller calculator. So this is another reason why we should find a way to to move this into its own, like to move this whole thing into its own scope and its own kind of app that we that we trigger maybe like a little um, microservice or Kubernetes setup that we can just spin up and then do this stuff real quick. But for this video, we're just gonna let this work, and then I'm also gonna go back into the edit page and I'm just gonna update the test to look for challenges run test controller calculator now update the challenge now if we go and create our calculator class well <laughs> funny enough it still failed I think it's kind of cached or something I've got this before I'm just gonna try to restart class calculator and just like that you solve the challenge now if we want to add more challenges. So it's not good enough to just check if it should exist. Let's test calculator should be able to add, right? Just as simple as that. And then the test would look like assert we'd use this dot add. And then let's pass in two numbers. So I'm going to do one, two, and then I'm going to expect it to be three. Calculator should add the numbers correctly. So this is like if the, this is like the failure message. But then if we go and update the challenge, and now we do the same thing where we just say we make a class calculator. Before it uh, passed, now it's saying it failed. The test failed. Try a new solution. And if you see what happened. I don't know if this is cached, but there's two assertions, one error. So that might be helpful. But like I said, this kind of caches. So see, as whenever you do it, it kind of does it again. See, we have class calculator. Now I'm going to add a method. So it's actually giving me a class method. It's going to accept two numbers. And then we're just going to do n1 plus n2. Now we're going to run the test. Wait, that, this one should actually have worked. That's kind of weird. See, this doing add, it should have actually 1 plus 2 equals 3. For some reason, it didn't. Let's try it again. Oh. Okay, why not? This is kind of weird. Yeah, so there's actually a typo here. What I meant to do is not assert, but assert equal. Uh, because assert is just asserting true or false. Assert equal is actually comparing two values. So then I added uh, this class, adding the two numbers, and this is the expected value, and this is the message if it fails. And I'll update the challenge. I'll go in here and I'll just quickly create that method again. N1 n plus two, n one plus n two. It's just super easy. Run test. I solved the challenge. Okay, so that was pretty awesome. We were able to build our app where we, for one, we can create coding challenges, write the tests, add a description, and then we have this whole page where a user can go put their code and then check if it's correct or not by running this test. This is insane. I, I really wanted to build an app like this and I hope all of you found this really interesting. If you're still watching, I appreciate it so much. You guys are the reason that I keep making videos. I just want to share my knowledge and show, you know, what you can do if you put your mind to it. You can really build any app, do anything that you want. Even though this is just a little start to this type of app, it's still a working product. We're able to get this fixed. So yeah, actually the, the thing I was thinking would be cool is at this point, we should actually let the user save their progress. 
So like every time they go and run tests and it failed, if they reload, it actually doesn't save their code. So I feel like it'd be really cool uh, if we could save progress and also when they solve it, we can mark that as solved, right? So to do that, I'm gonna go into the terminal and we're just gonna generate a new model. So if we go, I'm gonna do Rails G model. And I'm gonna call this a user challenge. And it's gonna belong to a user. And it's gonna belong to a challenge. Oops, I see I see the commands getting in the way of the screen, so I'm gonna move that real quick. Don't wanna annoy any you guys. I know I've had some problems with that in the past, but now I'm being smart. Okay, so it belongs to user, belongs to challenge. Then we're gonna need a few more columns. Like, well, let's have code, type text. That's where we'll save the progress. And then it's also do a status, which can be type integer. And then we're gonna map this into an enum inside of our app. So we can do that. Let's migrate the database. Actually, since we're doing an enum, I wanna do a default of zero on the migration. So we can go and open this file. Uh, you can either do it in the code editor or I'm gonna do it in the console, just with Vim. Just cause that's pretty easy. Although Vim can be annoying. Let's see down here on the integer status. I'm gonna set default zero. And I'm gonna write out of this. And then from there, I can migrate the database. Now we can just go ahead and start the server again. Refresh, and I wanna apply uh, this logic. So the first thing is let's add the enum to to the user challenge model. So if you go into models, we'll see a new model called user challenge. Belongs to user, belongs to challenge. And then let's just do enum status. And then you can either do this in an array or you can do a hash. I guess it'd be it'd probably be easier for this video to do a hash just so you can understand. So what we'd have is the default would be zero, which would be maybe like in progress is zero. And then just simply completed is one. And now the cool thing about this is we're gonna get a few different methods with this. And then we also get a scope on the model. Now, since this belongs to a user and a challenge, I wanna quickly uh, link these together. Let's go into the user, let's add has many, User challenges, and then a challenge. This also has many user challenges. Okay, and then let's go into the challenges controller, or no, not challenges controller. Let's go into the challenges folder and the run test controller, and then inside of here, we'll actually create the user challenge up here. So we can do something like challenge dot user challenges dot find or create by and then we're going to do it by the user id which should be current user to id so that would either find it or create it and then we can set that to user challenge equals this and then what we'll do is every time they submit it we'll update the code Oops, with params code which will allow us to save their progress. And then down here at the end, so if the result, that means it was successful, we can update the status to completed. Just like that. Now this will allow us to save the progress a little bit better. And then now what I wanna do is I wanna go to the challenges show page, right? And right down here, I'll actually show, I'll always show the completed if <laughs> it's kind of tricky but if challenge well let's not do that let's say if user challenge right and then we can define this in the controller so not in run test but in the regular challenges controller and then in the show action we can define that user challenge by getting it let's do it off the current user Oops, current user dot user challenges dot find by and we'll pass challenge ID, which will be the challenge.id. Now if we refresh, it'll check if we have the user challenge, which we don't. So let's go ahead and start making progress. 
Uh, so let's even start off here. There's like a typo in the calculator. We run the tests. Obviously they failed. So I just refreshed and we don't see the code and we also are showing the message. Which is because if we go back in that show page, there's a few things we have to fix up here. So actually instead of checking if user challenge, which is basically just saying like, was there any progress made on this? Was there, has it ever been tested? Instead of that, we need to say if user challenge completed, but we'll also use a safety operator just in case it's the first time they're on the challenge page and they don't have a user challenge. Then what we can do is inside the code editor, we need to actually pass our user challenge. So let's pass that as another parameter. User challenger, and then we can go into the code editor partial. Inside of here, we can just set the value to user.challenge code, and we'll also use the safety operator. So what the safety operator does is, just in case the user challenge isn't defined, this would normally break if there wasn't a safety operator. But adding this this like ampersand thing actually catches the error. So it'll just show up as nil, which is just a normal default value. And if we refresh, we see we don't we no longer see the message, but we do see the current state of the code. And if we want to start working on the actual like more pieces of the code, see the test failed. And then we refresh, we still see it. So we could leave and we could come back later. And we still have our code here. This is pretty cool. And let's go and actually write the code here. Run the test, you solved it. Now when we refresh, we always know that we solved the challenge. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and stay tuned for new videos. If you're new, please subscribe because I'm gonna be making awesome content like this basically daily at this point, but I'm just gonna keep it cranking and make a lot of more cool videos. Also, if you have any ideas, please comment them down below and I'll be sure to make them in a future video. Uh, hope you guys have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.